distinguished colleagues, uh, honorable guests, I'm delighted to welcome everyone on the sixth uh, session, which is actually the last one session during our uh, conference. Uh, thank you for all uh, who stayed here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, introduce myself. My name is uh, Jan Szumski. I represent the Historical Bureau of the uh, IPN, and I'm going to run uh, this session. Um, our roadmap for today includes uh, two papers, uh, two talks. Unfortunately, one of the uh, our speaker uh, was not able to join us. Uh, so we're gonna have a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, time for uh, discussion, and uh, I'd like to encourage uh, all of you to uh, take part, take an active part in the uh, discussion. But uh, uh, let me uh, let me uh, jump to the uh, our session, and first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, Professor uh, Alexander uh, Zivotic, uh, uh, who is uh, affiliated with the uh, Department of History of Yugoslavia, of Yugoslavia, Faculty of Philosophy at the Belgrade University in Serbia, uh, and he's going to uh, present today a paper entitled uh, "League of Communists of Yugoslavia and Political Change in the Soviet Union." 1985-1989. Uh, uh, dear professor, the floor is yours. Uh, dear colleagues, dear friends, as you informed, I uh, will talk about uh, uh, relations between Yugoslavia and the Soviet Union, especially in topic of uh, Yugoslav reactions on the political changes in the Soviet Union during the last uh, uh, part of the Cold War period. Relations between Yugoslavia and Soviet Union entered a much more uncertain phase after Tito's death. Yugoslavia reacted to Soviet intervention in Afghanistan by raising military readiness and openly condemned the intervention at the UN General Assembly in uh, 1980 and at the special conference of non-aligned in New uh, Delhi. A resolution was adopted demanding a political solution and the withdrawal of Soviet troops from Afghanistan. On the other hand, the stable relations were maintained between the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia, which was also reflected on the communique after the visit of uh, Soviet Minister of Foreign Affairs Gromyko to Yugoslavia in 1982, in which Afgan Afghanistan was not mentioned. During the 80s, Yugoslavia was faced with a worsening economic situation, a high infl inflation rate around 16%, and a debt of around 20 billion. Yugoslavia's dependence on the Soviet Union was constantly increasing, more that half of exports went to Comic-Con countries, one-third of that to the Soviet Union. Only uh, during the period between um, um, uh, 83 and 84 did this trend stop after the multi-day session of the presidency of the uh, Yugoslavia, where the issue of growing economic and political ties to the Soviet Union and the other countries of the Eastern Bloc was discussed. However, despite increased economic dependence, Yugoslavia maintained its military and political independence. Uh, Yugoslavia was uh, still a key factor of uh, any alliance in the Balkans during the, that period. Uh, on the Soviet side, uh, arrival of Gorbachev marked a new effort uh, by the Soviet Union in its attempt to reform socialism. At that time, Yugoslavia was making attempts in the same direction. Before Gorbachev's visit, Yugoslavia is already seen as a country shaken by deep crisis. In the countries of the Warsaw Pact, uh, the prevailing opinion was that the situation in Yugoslavia was difficult and that the system of debt centralization and self-management had been defeated. There uh, was also an opinion that the process of uh, differentiation was going on the country due to economic difficulties and that healthy forces, uh, so-called healthy forces, uh, would try to save socialism. The Institute of Social Sciences of the uh, Soviet Academy of Science 
on the order of the Soviet leadership made an analysis in which it evaluates the situation in Yugoslavia extremely negatively. Accordingly, it was expected that the in uh, indebtedness in the West would push Yugoslavia towards the Eastern Camp and the Soviet Union, and that time would walk in favor of the influence and the interests of the Soviet Union. In the same time, NATO Strategic Assessment Group assessed, assessed that Yugoslavia had entered an acute uh, crisis that can explode at any moment, turning into Libanization or super balkanization, so called. Gorbachev's visit to Yugoslavia in 1988 occurred at the time when the world was already looking at Yugoslavia as a potential crisis area, which is why that visit was perceived in the Yugoslavia and the world as an extremely significant event. In the period preceding the visit, the Soviet Union did not exert direct pressure on the Yugoslav state, apparently too preoccupied with own problems. However, that was uh, an assessment that Yugoslavia difficulties would reduce the difference between the two countries. Slovenia then criticized Yugoslavia's economic orientation towards the east. Uh, around 50% uh, uh, of Yugoslav exports at the time were oriented towards the east. Uh, the Ljubljana uh, daily Delo accused the federation authorities of high treason and sliding towards the east. This position was also repeated by the Slovenian representatives in the federation, uh, by the Stefan Korosic, secretary of the federal party presidency, for example, uh, during the 1989 made a statement that Yugoslavia should join the association with uh, European Union, which caused quite, uh, quite a storm in, in the Federation. Franz Popit also pointed out the, the need to turn Yugoslavia to Europe because the influence and reputation of the country in the non-aligned movement depends on the, our reputation and influence in Europe, which was later repeated by Milan Kuchan, who claimed that without Europe, we cannot have influence in the world of non-aligned. Mikhail Gorbachev's visit came at the time when the the two, uh, when he too is looking for alternative to the Stalinist model, uh, and uh, in the sense of still perceives Yugoslavia as a country far ahead of the Soviet Union, that is as a model and direction <coughs> that the Soviet Union has yet to follow. His visit was preceded by extensive preparation, almost a few years, which raised all open issues between the two countries, among others, the issue of trade surplus. In the conversation between uh, Raiv Dizdarevic, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Edward Shevardnadze, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Soviet Union, during the, his visit to Yugoslavia in 1987, the issue of surplus dominates. Dizdarevic stated that the issue of the uh, surplus dominates in the wider circles in Yugoslavia, and uh, not only as an economic and financial issue, that the Yugoslav companies are asking to question whether it it is possible to look with certain in the future economic cooperation with the Soviet Union and enter into business safely. At that time, uh, the Soviet Union led the more dynamics internal and offensive foreign policy, but still in context of reform and socialism. Gorbachev still saw pluralism as inappropriate for multinational states. François Mitterrand, the president of France, also urged him to adopt a multi-party system, even if that meant only left-wing parties. Gorbachev finds that socialism has broken out to new historical boundaries and that everything, both practice and theory, is being renewed. He believed that renouncing the dogmatic, bureaucratic, and voluntary heritage of socialism would get a new chance. He then talks about the Soviet determination to continue with revolutionary reconstruction in all areas of life. Gorbachev and Shevardnadze stand out as strongly reform-oriented in the people who believe in the survival of the social, uh, socialism, but reformed. Preparation for Gorbachev's visit after the visit and talks with Shevardnadze took place without any major difficulties. From the Yugoslav side, a difficult part, uh, part of the joint drawing of the text of declaration is expected because almost always the discussion with the Soviets about joint documents and announcements were more discussions about disagreements uh, than agreements. This time, it was a different. By the end of October, both uh, drafts uh, were ready. Naturally, they were different. 
But the reconciliation was not an argument. It was a useful discussion and clarification on constructive dialogue in which a good part of our proposals were accepted. From the Soviet side, there were also a lot of essential new, acceptable, and very significant proposals and positions. From such a dialogue, a draft document was born the likes of which the Yugoslav had not uh, had before with Soviets. The final text was verified by Shevardnadze and Nizdarevic with the, the thus pre prepared text of declaration and the proposal for the agreement on long-term economic cooperation until to the end of the, um, uh, se that century. Gorbachev's visit to Yugoslavia began uh, at March 1988. It uh, lasted a few days. It was the longest and had done to country since uh, coming of the, uh, on the helm of the Soviet Union. Content with it comes to was, uh, uh, what was said in the talks about mutual relation, evaluations of Yugoslav system, role on international level, level evaluation of the situation in the Soviet Union, and the change they are making about international orientation, principles, and the goals of the new Soviet foreign policy, etc. These were talks that had never happened before with the Soviets. Gorbachev's speech in the Assembly of Yugoslavia, the contents of joint declaration, the statements he gave to the press, and the visit was followed by a huge number of journalists, were messages to the world public, and it's no uh, coincidence that he wanted to send from Belgrade. He knew th uh, th uh, that because of this, they would have a wider uh, resonance. Because the visit had maximum worldwide publicity, precisely because of the long-standing conflict, attitudes, understanding, and practices of Belgrade and, and Moscow. The essence of what Gorbachev said about mutual relations, and especially what was written in the declaration as their um, basis is the acceptance of the full affirmation of the principles that were con contested until then, and because of insisting of them, we were con constantly attacked and exposed of uh, various pressures. These are independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity, equ equality, non-interference in international uh, affairs, and any form unconditional respect of the particular Articulations of the socialist development paths in different in, different international position. It was unimaginable uh, until then for the Soviet leader to say, and that in Belgrade, no one can impose his model on anyone, and the Soviet Union imposed it its own for decades. Gorbachev positively assessed the uh, uh, Yugoslav system of self-management, which is also why. Uh, they have been attacked for years as revisionist social democrats and the, and, and the same. He said Yugoslavia's experience gained in the development of the political system of socialist self-management and on course of consistently implementing of principles of socialist self-management in Soviet Union are new opportunities for mutual enrichment of knowledge. After the conversation with Shevardnadze during the Korbatro visit, uh, they must say something about uh, attack on Yugoslavia during uh, uh, 1948, uh, uh, when harmonizing the text of declaration, it was said in adopting version that consistent respect for autonomy and independence of the parties, the socialist countries in determining the parts of their own development made it possible to remove the causes uh, that led to conflict between uh, Communist Party of Yugoslavia and Soviet Communist Party and the Inform Bureau during the 1948. Yugoslavia felt that his was not enough. The Soviet side could not accept more. In the speech in the assembly, Gorbachev said that unfounded ac accusations were raised against the leadership of the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. It was uh, very important for the Yugoslav uh, side. Um, Gorbachev uh, also acknowledged uh, Tito in, in the talks. He said that he considered himself obligated to Tito, who had done a lot for the cause of socialism and Soviet Yugoslav relation. In his own request, he visited Tito's grave and laid the uh, flowers. Uh, after that, Gorbachev uh, said twice in the talks in Belgrade, in the final talks in Dubrovnik, that declara declarations has enormous uh, 
significance not only for relations between Yugoslavia and Soviet Union, but also much wider. The visit strengthened Yugoslavia's otherwise were very vulnerable international position due to crisis uh, it entered. It was precisely on the occasion of this visit that the values of the Yugoslavia model and the contribution were reaffirmed in the world the public. Uh, and at the end of visit, in the final talks held in Dubrovnik, Gorbachev said uh, that he liked that uh, they didn't exchange compliments, but talked openly and hard. And then he concluded uh, that uh, Yugoslav has given them a lot of uh, food for thought. Uh, he insisted on continuing the dialogue at various levels about uh, future of socialism, about the problems of the development of the two countries, about phenomenon in world development and world relations, about some international problems, among them those in which in Soviet Union is not sufficient, sufficiently present, such as international economic relation, international economic order. The Yugoslav had every reason not only to be satisfied, but also to triumph after everything that the, um, did uh, they did and uh, what they had to oppose since 1948 because it has been shown how historically uh, the value of that orientation, those ideas or actions of Yugoslavia which led to progress and led to affirmation had been confirmed. Unfortunately, that affirmation of those values was too late. It came into the time when it was clear how uh, disasters uh, it was for the fate of Yugoslavia and did not go further boldly and creatively in that uh, direction that it stopped and that it trapped itself in the past. After that visit, Yugoslavia with the impression that Gorbachev left Yugoslavia with much more positive impressions that than performance uh, he came with. The impression was that he experienced a completely different Yugoslavia that he thought of it before his arrival, different from that he lived in the Soviet Union and different from camp countries where they uh, often stayed. In that time, Yugoslavia, which was already in deep crisis, was in many ways ahead and in some ways even ahead of those countries. Uh, his contribution to establishing the Soviet Union-Yugoslavia relations on healthy and fruitful principles to ending decades of Soviet hegemonic pretensions towards Yugoslavia to affirm the understanding and principles of the true progress, a truly historical value. Gorbachev left a positive impression of these Yugoslav interlocutors. It was a, a Soviet leader unlike many they knew. He left the impression of a modern politi uh, politician and statesman with the way wide education, great experience, and truly exceptionally intelligence. He was ready for a dialogue on its issue. He did not avoid any topic. He had seemed condemned, uh, confident, uh, even confident in this conversation. In addition uh, to this, the impression was that he was not subject to emotions, that he was very rational. Uh, rational. It even seemed too much. Um, after the... Uh, conversation with Shevardnadze that during Gorbachev's visit they must say something about uh, uh, Inform Bureau too. Uh, and they discussed about uh, declarations. Uh, now we can say something, I think that we have enough time, about meetings with the Republican leaders of Serbia, Croatia, and Slovenia. We're also in the function of reviewing the reform efforts in Yugoslavia. Uh, Gorbachev was most impressed by Slovenia, which at the time had a gross uh, income of, uh, uh, of uh, $5,000 per capita. He sees it as an example that should be followed. His meeting with the leaders of uh, Serbia he had a special resonance in the Serbian public. And Slobodan Milosevic said in his toast at the lunch in honor of Gorbachev, we in Yugoslavia are building uh, self uh, governing socialism as our way of building socialism. He also pointed out the problems, but also uh, the need for society of mobilize precisely in the face of difficulties. He pointed that Serbia is freeing itself from blockades in economic relations, some negative constitutional solutions, and especially the conse consequence of counter-revolution in Kosovo. Uh, uh, he said that the heart 
of every Russian and Serb, there is a genetic preposition uh, to benevolence and the, the desire for friendship. Um, and that their possibilities are not yet exhausted. Serbia is economically the most close link to the Soviet market. On the total Yugoslavia export to the Soviet Union, 41% is uh, accounted for the Serbia, 33% by Croatia, and 11% by Slovenia. Uh, the emergence of Gorbachev introduced a new moment in their interblock uh, inter relations. Their negotiations were dominated by military relations and the reduction of armed forces, losing the position of the equal world power in the living the Eastern European community, as well as being limited to land power of the uh, Eurasian continent, creating frustration among the ruling political elite in Russia, uh, which had uh, special echo in Yugoslavia and especially in the um, army uh, circles in uh, Yugoslav society. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Zhivotic, uh, for your uh, valuable uh, contribution. And uh, I believe uh, uh, now we can uh, shift gears uh, to the next uh, speaker. And uh, I am pleased to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Alesh Gabrich uh, from the Institute of Contemporary History. Uh, I'll try to uh, pronounce it properly. Institut za Novatio Zgodovino. Am I right? <laughs> Great. <laughs> In Ljubljana. Uh, his main uh, interests, uh, academic interests, includes the uh, contemporary history of uh, Slovenia uh, in terms of uh, political, cultural, and uh, social issues. Um, and uh, today, uh, Dr. Gabrich um, is going to present uh, a paper uh, entitled uh, Intellectuals as, uh, as a Position in Slovenia in the 1980s. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Gabrich, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So we heard a lot of Yugoslavia from the, my colleague, uh, uh, and I will be more focused uh, in the other part, not just the party part, but the intellectuals which had special position in Yugoslavia and especially in uh, Slovenia uh, before the Tito's death, but then in the 80s it became a, a position, their position something special in the communist world. In June 1980, one month after Tito's death, an initiative was prepared to found a new journal in Ljubljana. This document was signed mainly by writers, poets, and professors of humanities and social sciences at the University of Ljubljana. Among them were people who were under surveillance of the Ministry of the Interior or had even been imprisoned for their beliefs, as well as the people who had been forced to give up their professorship due to the political purges. The signatories of this document addressed their initiatives to all authorities and political bodies which, uh, which, whose approval were, was required for the publications of the journal and who could support it with state subsidizes. It is also worth mentioning that the initiative was supported by the basic organization of the League of the Communists of Slovenia in the Slovenian Writers' Association and that among the signatories were several members of the League of the Communists who successfully defended their position and at official of forums. The very first issue of the new, uh, new review, they call it just that, Nova Revia, because they're talking about her, we're going for the two years. From uh, after uh, my uh, 1982, conferred the authorities' fears as the journal's authors opened up a debate on, topic, on topics that had previously been shrouded in silence and pursed a policy of publishing articles that other publications refused to print. It also ensured the unofficial rehabilitation of numerous Slovenes whose contribution had been ignored by the state publishing houses. <coughs> Although the novel Revia was a great novelty, it was not alone in this field. While intellectuals in the Soviet Union and in allies had great difficulty publishing their works, 
and Samizdat was often the only solution, the situation was different in Yugoslavia and especially in Slovenia. The works of controversial authors were also published by state publishing houses and in magazines subsidized by the state budget. In the years following Tito's death, there was an avalanche of criticism in cultural works attributed to the state leadership. Authors began to speak openly about the days of Yugoslav Stalinism and the dark, darkest uh, chapters of communist rule. Although the written world is best at expressing critical thought, uh, social and political criticism also manifests itself in uh, other areas of culture, including theater, music, especially punk poetry, film, etc. And much of this were supported with subsidies from state budget. The demand for respect of political freedom was increasingly formulated also in the form of open letters signed by more and more like-minded people and addressed to state or political authorities. The demand for the abolition of Article 133 of the Criminal Code or the abolition of the so-called verbal offence originated in Belgrade and also found vocal supporters in Slovenia, even if the Slovenian courts hardly ever applied that chapter of the Criminal Code. Uh, more than 600 Slovene artists and scientists in July 1982 signed an open letter in which they spoke out against the reform of secondary education at that time. In November 1983, around 500, uh, 1,500 people signed a petition against the death penalty. Other open letters concerned the demand for independent journalism or support for one of the, uh, or, uh, or other of the political prisoners in Yugoslavia. At the beginning of 1980s, the open letters had a hard time getting into the newspaper. But after just a few years, publication in one of the newspapers becomes almost the norm. The reaction of the communist leadership to the criticism of prominent personalities from the world of culture varied. A strong wave of criticism came from Serbia and Slovenia, which led, which led to increasing censorship bans and the confiscation of some magazine editions in both republics. But what clearly distinguished distinguished Slovenia from the rest of Yugoslavia and those from the rest of the Eastern world was the legal practice at that time. In Slovenia in the mid-80s, it was common to ban articles without their authors standing trial. And it was also not uncommon for courts to drop charges against magazines in publications. The conflict between artists and the authorities had far-reaching political consequences. The so-called Nazi punk affair of 1981, for example, was a particular turning point for the League of Socialist Youth of Slovenia, the youth organization, in which the future leaders of the League of the Communists were to gain political experience. The affair began with the arrest of the three young men who were allegedly punks and Nazis. Accusations were only true in one respect, that the youth subculture refused to follow the path laid out by the communist ideology. This was also the problem faced by the uh, youth organization leadership. The League of, uh, of Social Youth of Slovenia was forced to choose between two options, to listen to the communists in power, as always, and lose his influence over a large part of Slovenian youth, or to listen to the real wishes of the young people and risk an, an unfavorable development of relations with the League of the Communists. The youth organization functionaries opted for the second path and for an albeit initially tentative break with the League of Communists. A certain change was already noticeable at the Youth Organization Conference in 1982, when it was decided to support all activities that were popular with young people at that time. The decision was a milestone in Slovenia's political development. 
uh, youth organizations opened itself for new musical trend and also to the peace, environmental, feminist and lesbian movements, all of which were explicitly political. The fact that these movements were supported by an officially recognized political organization contributed significantly, significantly to the dissemination of views on general social issues other than those propagated by the Communist Party. In many cases, politicians did not resort to the hidden censorship that they had practiced so zealously just a few years earlier. <coughs> the feeling among intellectuals in the rest of Yugoslavia the Slovenia was an oasis in this part of the world was not unfounded. Members of the Slovenian judiciary were also increasingly of the opinion that the public prosecutor's office and courts should primarily be concerned with establishing criminal and corporate liability, and that the more sensitive issue of press freedom were best left to other institutions. The debates conducted on cultural platforms became increasingly political in the 1980s. At the beginning of the decade, writers and artists still justified their exp expressions with the right to ar uh, artistic ex expression, licencia poetica, while in the middle of the decade they began to abandon this form of protection. The Slovene Writers Association organized several public debates in Slovenia's most important cultural center, the Sankarudo, Ivan, uh, Ivan Sankar Cultural Center in Ljubljana. At the Slovenian Writers uh, Association Tribune in January 1985, the chairman of the, of the society, Tone Partlic, warned that people were increasingly turning to intellectuals and members of the Slovene Writers Association with questions about cu current political problems. <coughs> Quoting, political organization should think about why these issues are not being discussed in the basic organization within, within the League of the Co Communists and the Socialist Alliance of Working People. Partly emphasized, pointing out that the association has become an acceptable political interlocutor for a wider circle of the public. One month later, in February, Tone Partlic began his annual report with these words, quoting, Please do not take offense if my introduction to the annual report on the work of our association is somehow political, because current conditions, our commitment and the cultural and political circumstances of this time required <coughs> such an approach. Politicians talk a lot about culture, so we cultural professionals are forced to talk about politics. End of quotation. The leading figures of the Slovenian cultural life finally took center stage in the political arena when the debate on amending the Yugoslav constitution began. In 1986, the Yugoslav federal leadership submitted the discussion proposal for new constitutional amendments drafted under the dictates of the centralist forces in Belgrade. In the autumn of 1986, the staff of Nova Revia magazine responded to the new political situation with a contribution to the Slovenian national program. The article was published at the 57th issue of Nova Revia in February 1987 and immediately triggered a political storm throughout Yugoslavia. The authors and, uh, uh, in their articles touch on sensitive issues, such as the question of Slovenian statehood within Yugoslavia, the demand for Slovenian independence with reference to the right to self-determination, the demand to deprive the League of Communists of its privileges and monopolies, and the demand for the, the, the politicization of a number of areas uh, of social life. The official statements from the federal capital, Belgrade, and other parts of Yugoslavia were anonymously negative, while the reaction in Ljubljana was divided. The echo even spilled across the Yugoslav border as the Western European media began to take note of the new political trends. After the change at the top of the League of the Communists of Slovenia at the Party Congress in 1986, when Milan Kuchan was elected as the new chairman, the pressure on the cultural opposition eased, 
the judiciary was no longer used as an instrument for dealing with the party's opponents, as had been the case until that. The, pol the political affairs and the leniency of the Slovenian authorities reinforced the conviction that Slovenia was very different from the other Yugoslav republics. Slovene Writers' Association called for a public debate on the adoption of constitutional amendments on 16 of March 1987. The most important development uh, announced at this meeting was that some leading members of the uh, League of the Communists of Slovenia and members of the cultural opposition come together and discuss a number of the most pressing political dilemmas in a professional matter, manner without attempts of political disqualification at a debate convened by the cultural opposition. In June 1987, when the discussion brochure was presented in the public debate, the Constitutional Committee of the Slovene Writers Association was founded. In October 1987, when the majority of the demands submitted to the Federal Assembly in Belgrade from Slovenia were as usual rejected, the Slovene Writers Association leadership asked its chairman at that time, Rudy Šeligo, to, quote, send a written request to the Constitutional Committee of the Slovene Writers Association and propose it that it begin drafting a new constitution. At the next public debate, to which the uh, Writers Association invited in April 1988, they presented the Gradivo the Slovensko Stavo, material for the Slovenian constitution. Mikhail Gorbachev visited Ljubljana in March 1988, as we hear, and the and at his express wish, and against the will of some uh, leaders of the Yugoslav authorities from Belgrade, he also came to Yugoslavia and got to know the Slovenian version of socialism in Ljubljana. His interlocutor, the chairman of the League of Communists of Slovenia, Milan Kuchan, said that Gorbachev had described the Slovenian path as a laboratory of socialism. Gorbachev perceived the meeting with Kuchan as an open demonstration of Slovenia's independence in Yugoslavia and judge the reform in Slovenia to be far more radical than elsewhere in the country. However, Kuchan was of the opinion that Gorbachev's reform were on a par with the reforms from, uh, that the Slovenian reform communists were striving for in the early 1950s. The fact that Slovenia was different from the other parts of Yugoslavia and from other parts of the communist world was assessed both in Yugoslavia and outside. <coughs> Slovenian peculiarities were also noted in connection with the political upheavals in Poland, which were reported by foreign correspondents from Yugoslavia and American pol political analysts, who in April 1982 described the different attitudes towards supporting the Poles and solidarity. Uh, uh, quoting, placards with the Polish national colors and the solidarity emblem decorated a sold out rock concert sponsored by student organization and the main shopping street. This support for solidarity among Catholic Slovenes reflects their desire that Yugoslavia clearly and publicly back the Polish reform movement. Without the approval of local officials, such controversial action could not have taken place." End of quotation. Like Gorbachev, the last US ambassador to Yugoslavia, Warren Zimmerman, was also aware of Slovenian particularity in Yugoslavia. He experiences a great enthusiasm for connecting to the Western world, and after meeting with Slovenian leaders, for example, uh, uh, at that time, Slovenian uh, Prime Minister Dusan Šinigoj, for whom he, he said he is full of ideas and projects for economical cooperation with Western countries, and never once in our meeting did he refer to the Belgrade. And then, after speaking with uh, the Milan Kuchan, described a Slovenian spring as a conscious effort of the Slovenian Communist Party to turn the Republic into a West in the Western democracy with free elections that the party was prepared to lose. Kuchan and other polit uh, Slovenian politicians made it clear to Zimmerman that they still support the unity of Yugoslavia, but are no longer willing to be hostages to Milosevic's policies. 
They regarded unification with Europe as a Slovenian goal, but doubted that this could be achieved via Belgrade. When Slovenian intellectuals expressed demands for the democratization of society, they were not referring to the changed situation in the Soviet Union and the entry of Mikhail Gorbachev and his political reforms in the communist uh, world. Uh, when they talked about that, they were always talking about Kuchan's perestroika, just to mention it. At the time when Gorbachev announced the reforms in the western part of communist Europe, in the most western part of the communist Europe in Slovenia, the representative of the intellectual opposition and authorities was already facing each other in, pu in public discussions. When Gorbachev visited Ljubljana, material for the Slovenian constitution written by the cultural opposition was already in print and a few weeks later it was presented at the public uh, presentation. While elsewhere in the communist part of Europe, manifestation and docu the documents were still limited to criticism of the existing regime, intellectuals in Slovenia had already taken a decisive step forward and were not only looking for a way of, out of the old, but were also thinking about building the new. In 1987, the Slovenian cultural opposition represented the idea for a new national program, and in 1988, the draft for the future Slovenian constitution, which was to replace the then communist constitution. Such a thing was unimaginable in the other parts of Yugoslavia or in an, uh, other communist uh, uh, countries. The Berlin Wall was still standing at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Gabrich, for the uh, for another valuable uh, presentation. And before I start the discussion, uh, I'd like, using my privileged position here, I'd like to ask one uh, common and very important uh, question to our speakers. Um, we uh, talk a lot about the uh, influence. Uh, uh, um, influence from the uh, Soviet Union, and uh, my question: I'm I'm just wondering, uh, uh, what was the uh, real uh, knowledge uh, in Yugoslavia about the uh, reforms, uh, about the situation uh, inside within the Soviet Union? I mean, um, uh, how did uh, Yugoslavian uh, intellectuals uh, in different uh, republics, such as Slovenia, how did they how did they gather information? What was the uh, sources of uh, those information? And uh, uh, how did the uh, uh, Communist Party elite uh, gather uh, uh, those information? So uh, would you uh, elaborate the uh, Yugoslavian uh, perspective on uh, what was really going on in the Soviet Union uh, uh, at the time of perestroika? Thank you. Thank you for your uh, question. Yugoslav officials uh, had uh, uh, very important and I can say excellent information about situation in uh, Soviet Union because during the time uh, Yugoslavia has excellent uh, diplomatic staff in uh, Moscow uh, which uh, sent uh, uh, very informative materials and reports uh, uh, about uh, uh, political and uh, economic situation in Soviet Union and about uh, internal political uh, problems, especially about uh, opposition groups in uh, Soviet Union. But uh, Yugoslav intellectuals, I can talk about uh, uh, them in uh, Belgrade, uh, had uh, uh, information uh, which... Uh, uh, was uh, from which were from uh, uh, newspapers, uh, uh, magazines, and uh, from their uh, communication, especially speeches with the Soviet in intellectuals. Many of them uh, uh, came to Moscow during the, the time, uh, especially in organizations of uh, uh, Literaturna Gazeta. Uh, they organized uh, round tables uh, between uh, 
Yugoslavian Soviet intellectuals, especially uh, important was one round table about uh, uh, experiences after uh, 40 years of Yugoslav Soviet uh, uh, clash uh, uh, during the Inform Bureau. Uh, one group of uh, historians and most important and most uh, um, significant uh, Yugoslav uh, uh, dissident Milovan Zilas uh, was in Moscow in that uh, groups uh, as a uh, 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 man who was uh, involved in that uh, in that uh, uh, process uh, it was a g uh, excellent opportunity for yugoslav side to uh, see on uh, uh, that topic in in vivo in uh, moscow and they uh, impressions uh, was uh, very strong uh, about uh, about that uh, process they told that perestroika uh, is very important that it is a, a liberal uh, uh, a liberal uh, uh, wave in soviet uh, policy but they said as colleague uh, gabrich said that that reform process it is uh, equal of Yugoslav reform process during the 50s. Uh, Dr. Gabrich, if I may. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, it was said a lot of, uh, <laughs> I totally agree. Maybe, for, uh, of course, they, they uh, could uh, translate or, or uh, read everything from the magazines uh, Alexander mentioned, but uh, uh, for the uh, intellectual opposition, it was at that time, I think it's 86, 87, more important, not just Gorbachev, or not Gorbachev, but for example, Michnik. Uh, 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 and uh, Va uh, Václav Havel, mm -hmm. and they were more interesting in uh, connecting with those people who were reformers, uh, uh, reforming intellectuals in the uh, 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 Eastern countries, and have a trouble with uh, with uh, state police. For example, uh, Havel's work, uh, the window, uh, 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 because of uh, it, he was imprisoned, as I know, in uh, 1977. For example, where at that time, at the 80s, played just in the uh, West Germany and in the Western theaters and in Japan and USA and in Yugoslavia. For, I think it was four presentations in Yugoslavia, but two in Serbia and two in Slovenia. But this is all, uh, 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 another difference. In uh, Serbia was uh, uh, the, the, those, uh, let's say, provocative theaters, in Yugoslavia, one in Slovenia, one was also in the professional state budget uh, uh, theater. So these are those differences. So they know a lot of Gorbachev, but I think they just didn't show so much interest. They um, uh, put much interest on the, those dissidents from the uh, uh, Czechoslovakia, from the and Poland. Yes, uh, yes. I want to uh, to sell some uh, to uh, to. Take something, uh, Michnik, uh, uh, Havel, uh, Saharov, uh, they were extremely popular in the whole Yugoslav uh, space during that, that time. Especially uh, Havel in Belgrade. Uh, uh, during the time that he was in uh, prison in Belgrade, uh, published his uh, uh, books uh, uh, in uh, Belgrade theaters, uh, uh, was to his uh, uh, dramas, uh, Yugoslav intellectuals, especially in in Belgrade, uh, put the money to to his uh, uh, family during the, that uh, that uh, period, uh, because uh, especially during the eighties in uh, Yugoslavia we had a very uh, very liberal moment. Uh, especially in circles of uh, so-called intellectual opposition, uh, especially uh, in connections between Belgrade and Ljubljana. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, Belgrade uh, and uh, Ljubljana's uh, intellectuals uh, during that period uh, was, uh, were very uh, close in their uh, actions against, uh, against, against uh, official narrative. 
And uh, just to add, for example, uh, uh, more interest for, for uh, Gorbachev was, uh, uh, as I said, in the Communist Party. He, Gorbachev, and Kuchan mm -hmm. stayed friends for a long time. So in, uh, when Gorbachev uh, seized the, po uh, the politics and left the uh, Soviet Union, uh, the Russia, they met and conversated uh, uh, many times and remember their first uh, meeting in uh, Ljubljana when Gorbachev visited Ljubljana. So they stay good friends after that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for an interesting uh, answer. Uh, I do appreciate. And now uh, I'd like to open uh, discussion and uh, uh, I want you, uh, the honorable guests, the, our audience, to uh, encourage uh, to share uh, perspective, opinion, Maybe you have a, a question, so don't uh, hesitate. Uh, the floor is open for your uh, insight. I don't see any volunteers. <laughs> it's time for end. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if not, uh, it's time for the uh, some uh, final remarks. So uh, once again, uh, I would like to um, uh, thank you uh, all of us for the uh, productive and uh, constructive uh, discussion. Um, I guess that it's time for uh, invitation for the Professor Shumila, uh, and I'd like to ask him for some final remarks. Professor Shumila, the floor is yours. Thank you, and some uh, information for you. Uh, now, after this panel, will be a short tour of our this education center. <laughs> Uh, for you and then uh, will be lunch uh, and uh, papers from our conference will be published uh, next year I hope uh, in our scientific journal communism system people documentation and uh, I will inform you um, about details uh, by email and so it was our conference uh, was uh, the sixth and last conference in the series communist, uh, Revolution Accomplished Communist in Power, our series. And we met for the first time uh, in Warsaw six years ago, in December uh, 2018. And then we held meetings in Budapest, uh, in Bratislava twice and in Prague. Uh, so it uh, it was possible thanks to cooperation of our four friendly uh, institution, Polish Institute Pamięci Narodowej, Hungarian Committee of National Remembrance, uh, Nemzeti MLKZ Bizot Shaga. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Uh, Slovakian uh, Ustaw Pameti Naroda and Czech Ustaw Prostudium Totalitnich Reżimu Ustr. Uh, so I think this our six meetings were very good meetings <laughs> for us. <laughs> and uh, I would like to thank uh, everyone who took part in our conference and, and I would like to uh, thank uh, everyone uh, who involved in organizing our conference. First of all, uh, our nice colleagues from IPN, Historical Research Office, Małgosia and uh, Paulina. Uh, so, I wish you nice stay in Warsaw, good weather and safe return home. <laughs> Goodbye.